is the variation across these scenarios coming from some sort of exogenous fluctuation in the debt, or is it that there's actual cuts that households experience as losses of benefits? Like, I might be willing to forego my higher income right. if I knew I had Social Security and Medicare, for example. So how does that fit in here? Great, great question. Let me, let me tell you, like, the technical answer and then, like, the philosophical answer. The technical answer is the difference between the first two scenarios is essentially completely exogenous because the difference is CBO ran it once by saying, what if we assumed debt had no crowd out effect? And then they ran it a second way and said, okay, now what do we see in our model? Between the second one and the third one is actually specific policies. And the, the major policies are significantly lower, how they incorporate them are significantly lower tax rates on capital and labor, which is sort of reflective of, um, it's complicated how they do it, but it's basically reflective of extends the Trump tax cuts and then don't let real bracket creep happen after that. Um, and it's increases in discretionary spending, of which they assume a certain amount is, um, is investments. And so that's the technical answer to your question, is that essentially between the first and the second, it's, it's sort of it, it's fairy dust. And between the second and the third is actual policies. I think the philosophical point you're making is that like, we need to compare the economic cost of debt to the economic benefit of what we're buying with that debt. And not just the GDP benefit, but the, but the benefit that may appear um, in, in transfer payments, for example, or in lower taxes, or in having more security because we know that the Department of Defense is more likely to protect us or things like that. And that is the trade-off. That's, that's, that's always the trade-off between borrowing and not borrowing. 